Praise the Lord, everyone. I pray you're having a blessed day. I want to share the Word of God with you. I want to talk about the flesh and the Spirit, God's fulfillment, to guard God's promises, to stand on them, to guard our hearts and the gateways to our soul. And the enemy wants us to settle for less. And God, God's promises are yes and amen. And His promises are for His children. And we are a heritage of His and children a heritage of the Lord, and we have an inheritance through Christ. And uh, that's what Ephesians teaches us. And I want to share this with you today uh, in Ephesians, or excuse me, Galatians 4. Uh, it says, Abraham's two children. And the church here in Galatians was confused, and they were trying to go back under the law. And Paul was telling them that Christ came to fulfill the law, that it is the old and the new. And that we must have the spirit as well and so um paul begins to say in verse 21 tell me do you want to go and live under the law do you want the law do you know what the law actually says the scripture says that abraham had two sons one from his slave wife and from the freeborn the son of the slave wife was born with human attempt to bring about the fulfillment of God's promise. This began to stick out to me as I began to read this. The Lord began to enlighten me how many times if we get impatient waiting on the Lord that we try to bring back, bring forth a human attempt for God's promise. But we know that human attempt is um, it's just worthless and that we must wait on the Lord. And, you know, uh, many times the enemy tries to get us to do things our own way with human effort. And I began to think about Cain and Abel. You know, Abel knew that he had to have that blood sacrifice. And he brought the, the lamb and sacrificed. He had to have that blood atonement. But Cain brought forth uh, the fruit. And, and his sacrifice was not from his heart. Uh, he, uh, and I began to think about he done it in a human attempt. And, you know, we have to truly serve the Lord with the singleness of our heart. And we have to do uh, things according to the word and in order. And we have to come through the blood. And we have to stay under the blood and wait on the Lord and stand on his promises. Don't settle for less because God is a God. His blood is more than enough. His grace is sufficient. The word of God says that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ever think or ask. He supplies all of our riches all of our needs according to his riches and his glory he's a god that owns a cattle of a thousand hills and uh, he is uh, jehovah jireh our provider and don't settle uh for for any less don't compromise whatever you're believing god for his promises are yes and amen and we cannot uh bring forth human effort it's got to be god's fulfillment uh through his promise and being obedient to the word and I want to continue to read this. It says, But the son of the freeborn wife was born as God's own fulfillment in his promise. You know, he has a real, there's real fulfillment in God's promises. And that's what uh, we are to strive for and to seek after. And nothing else won't do. The Lord, he satisfies, satisfies. He's living water. And if we drink of his living water, we will never thirst again. But it says in verse 24, these two women serve as an illustration of God's two covenants. The, the first woman, Hagar, represents Mount Sinai when the people received the law and they were enslaved. Now, Jerusalem is just like Mount Sinai in, Ab in Arabia because she and her children live in slavery to the law but the other woman sarah represents the heavenly jerusalem she is a free woman and she is our mother as isaiah said listen to this rejoice O childless woman you who have never given birth break out in joyful shout you who have never been in labor for the desolate women now has more children and the woman who lives with her husband and so he begins to say and you, dear brothers and sisters, are children of the promise, just like Isaac. But you are now being persecuted by those who want to keep the law. And he says, just as Ishmael, the child born of the human effort, persecuted Isaac, the child born by the power of the Spirit. When you walk by the Spirit and you are walking upright before God, there is a persecution. There's a persecution in the land. But the Word of God says there's no condemnation to them that walk by the Spirit. 
And I, I began to think about that and how also it's a war within. The flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit uh, against the flesh. But we have to crucify this flesh, crucify and conquer. And John the Baptist said it this way, I must decrease that he must increase. And we have to... Paul began to say, get rid of the slave and her son. Uh, kick out the bondwoman. Come on, somebody. And it says that when we are free, we're free indeed. And it says that whenever we're free, we're no longer entangled in the yoke of bondage. That Christ has set us free. And where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty and there is freedom. And God is not a God of bondage. Come on, somebody. So we have to get rid of the slave and her son. Come on, somebody. We have to die out to the flesh. And we have got to uh, seek the Spirit of God. And I want to go uh, over to Corinthians. Well, first I want to go to Matthew real quick. And I want to read this. When Paul said to kick out the bond woman and her son, you know, get rid of the bondage. Uh, you know, a wise person told me the only way to get rid of a spirit is to quit feeding it. Let it starve. And we have got to let our flesh, we've got to crucify that. And I want to read this to you in Matthew 5 and 29. But it says, but I say to any, it says, so if your eye, even your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away. For it is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your hand, even your strong hand, causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better for you to lose one part of your body than your whole body to be thrown into hell. Let go of whatever the hindrance is. Seek the Lord and He will empower you and strengthen you. We are overcomers through Christ and through the blood. We can't do it in human effort, but when we depend on the blood of the Lamb, and we know that His grace is sufficient, and He takes us from faith to faith, glory to glory, the strength to strength, and He empowers us, and He breaks the yokes, we don't do it within ourselves. Paul said we have no confidence in the flesh, but we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. And we... um strive for this perfection through the blood and through the strength of the spirit but and paul said kick out the the bond woman and her son and then uh in matthew it says cut off come on somebody uh those weaknesses those things and it and the eye represents uh the gateways you know we have eyes and ears and our mouth and our mind they're gateways to our soul and we got to be on guard and we have got to guard our heart because the bible says that out of the heart flows the issues of life out of the heart comes adulteries and fornication and lust come on somebody and i noticed here uh in matthew uh, right before he's talking about the eye and the gateway he says you have heard the old commandment says you must not commit adultery but I say, if you look on a woman in lust, you have already committed adultery in your heart. And the enemy wants us to sin with our mind and our eyes and our thoughts. But we have got to have the mind of Christ. The Bible says in Romans 12 and 2, uh, to be transformed by the renewing of the mind. He gives us a new mind and a new heart. A heart fixed on Him. That we can walk in His ways and His statues. That we can be a doer of the Word and live our lives as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable under God hallelujah he makes that way Christ makes that way we cannot do it within human effort and we cannot do it within ourselves praise God so I want to go to Corinthians I begin to see this in Corinthians uh, I begin to uh, read this um, it's in Corinthians first Corinthians 5 6 uh, and 7 and I'm just going to highlight over some scriptures but Paul begins to condemn spiritual pride and, and human effort. He begins to say, I hardly believe the report of sexual immorality going on among you, something that pagans do. I am told that a man in your church is living with his stepmother, and you are proud of your selves, but you should be mourning with sorrow and shame. And uh, he begins to address some situations in the church. And that's the way that it used to be in, in the house of God, that the men of God preached uh, righteousness. And, uh, you know, people were convicted. And he was a spiritual father, and he addressed the issues in the church because he was the apostle to the Gentiles, and he uh, brought forth the message 
uh, unto, unto the Gentiles. And I begin to think about how uh, the Bible says that a godly sorrow worketh repentance, that we are to uh, pray and cry and mourn and turn from sin. There should be, a, and repentance is a change, not just uh, saying that I'm sorry. But he says to mourn and sorrow and shame. And he said you should remove this man from your fellowship. And Paul begins to tell him to remove uh, influences that's going to pull on him. Remove people that refuse to repent and uh, to have a, a, a seared conscience. And, and their God is their own belly. He begins to tell them to remove these influences. And the Bible says that how can two walk together lest they agree. We have to be careful what we condone, what we agree with. The Word of God says, What does light have fellowship with darkness? That we are the children of the light. That we've been transformed um, out of darkness into the marvelous light. Show forth, therefore, the praises unto God. And then he begins to tell them, um, uh, here in the Word of God, he tells them to cut ties. And he begins to say, uh, You're boasting about this is terrible. Do you realize that this is a sin? Like a little yeast spreads through the whole batch of dough. Get rid of the old yeast, which represents, you know, the flesh and sin and how sin grows. Uh, and, you know, Christ has made a way for us to, he slain the intimacy, tore down the, the wall of perdition, and uh, he uh, cut the, the, for, the sin nature, the foreskin of our heart. Christ did all that at Calvary. And when we walk by the Spirit, we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So Paul says, get rid of the old yeast. Remove this wicked person from among you. Get rid of uh, wicked persons. Get rid of old yeast. We have got to make this change to enter in where God wants to take the church of the living God. He, the worshipers are rising. Prayer warriors are coming forth. His army and his remnant is coming forth and it is time for us to choose this day whom you are going to serve and we have got to uh, to die out to the flesh we have got to cut ties and uh you know paul begins to talk about and some of you are not going to like this but paul begins to talk about you know uh fornication and adultery and things like that and he begins to talk about cut ties with that you know some have to be delivered of soul ties and um i, I don't know why the lord led this what led me this way but i just want to share this with you so uh he begins to talk about um he begins to talk about separating yourself right here listen to this okay so he says removing the wicked person from among you then you will be like a fresh batch of dough made without yeast which is what you really are christ our passover lamb has been sacrificed for us so let us celebrate the festival not with old bread or of wickedness and evil, but with new bread of serenity and truth. And the Bible says we must worship him in spirit and truth. And Jesus Christ is the truth. And his word is revealed truth. And the truth will set you free. And it says, when I wrote to you before, I told you not to associate with people who indulge in sexual sin. But I wasn't talking about unbelievers who indulge in sexual sin, who are greedy and cheat people, worship idols. You would have to leave this world to avoid people like that. He said, I meant that you are not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer, yet indulges in sexual sin or greedy or worshipers or idols or abusive or a drunkard or cheats people. Don't even eat with such people. He begins to tell them to separate from this. And um, he said, it is my responsibility to judge. It is not my responsibility to judge the outsiders, but it certainly is our responsibility to judge those inside the church who are sinning. God will judge those who are outside, but as the scripture says, you must, must remove the evil person from among you. So whatever is pulling on you, influencing you, um, you know, remove it from among you. Seek the Lord. His blood is able to wash you, cleanse you, empower you, and he casts our sins as far as the east is from the west. He gives us a new name a new identity a new mind and a new heart with him with with through the blood and through the word and through a relationship and the power of the holy spirit and faith in jesus christ and not within human efforts and uh, i begin to uh, read this and listen to this it says don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of god don't fool yourself those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols commit adultery uh, practice homosexuality, thieves, greedy people, drunkard or abusive, 
or cheat people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed and were made holy. You were made right by God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God, who sets us free from ever sin and ever weight. And uh, I just began to read this, and it reminded me uh, where he says, remove the sin, cast out the bondwoman. If you're right eye offend thee, cut it out. And it's not just, um, it's not just sexual sin, you know, uh, whether if it's just um, strife or upsetness, uh, whether if it's just something, the enemy coming against our mind, you know, don't settle for less. We are to have life and more abundant. We're to be victorious. We're to be overcomers, no matter what it is. And we all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. None of us is righteous. No, not one. But we are to strive for protect for um, perfection in the Lord. And we have to, we have to uh, turn from these things. And uh, I begin to read here uh, in... Uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 15, it says, Don't you realize that your bodies are actual parts of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is a part of Christ, and join to a prostitute? Never. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one with her body? For the scripture says two are united into one, but the person who is joined to the Lord, one spirit with him, run from sexual sin, no other sin is clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. And he begins to say that Christ brought, paid you with a high price and you must honor the Lord with your body. And he's talking about soul ties and what you are connected with. And uh, like I said, the Bible says that only two can uh, agree lest they walk together. And if they walk together, they agree. So uh, I just want to encourage you in the Lord. And I just know that there's more flesh in my life. And I want to decrease that he might increase. And I want to go to that place of the manifestations of the sons of God. And I want to go where the Lord excuse me, is leading me. And I want all that he has for me. And I know he has a plan and a purpose. And he does for you as well. And I just want to encourage you in the Lord. God bless you all.